Now we're going to go over a few more different types of problems here. So take a look at this. This is the problem here says find the exact value. So essentially what this kind of looks like is I just go up to the formulas. I'm looking for a sine times a cosine minus a cosine times a sine. So I just take a look up here and I'm looking for the minus here. So I know it's not this one here. because that says sine cosine, but that says plus here. So I know it can't be that one. Okay, so then I just continue to look for the one that matches. So I come over to the other side here and I say, okay, well, what about one of these? There's a minus. And then as I match that up, I see that everything matches. So that's the one I'm gonna use. So what that means here is, so, Essentially, what I'm doing is I'm working from this side instead of this side like we're accustomed to. Okay. So that means that my alpha is equal to pi 12s. And my beta equals 7 pi 12s. So all I'm going to do is write that in there. So that means this is going to be the sine of pi 12s minus the sine, oops, excuse me, not the sine, um, 7 pi 12s, excuse me. Okay, and then this is actually equal to the sine of negative 6 pi 12s, which if you know 6 pi 12s, that's going to be the sine of negative pi halves. Okay, so what we're going to do now is think of that unit circle again. So here it is. That's going to keep coming back for us. So negative pi halves is going to put me down here on the bottom here. So then that tells me then if that's negative pi halves, what is my sine of that? I know my sine of that equals negative 1. So that is the exact value. Let's try another one. This is a different type of problem. So here it is. This also says find the exact value. So what we need to do here is we need to set up where this triangle is going to be for each of these uh, conditions. Okay, so first off, let's take tangent of alpha equals negative 4 pi thirds. Now, if you look at this second piece here, this tells me what quadrant I'm in. So that's pi halves to pi. So that tells me I'm going to be in the second quadrant. So I'm just going to draw a rectangular coordinate system in a circular way here. So just the idea of unit circle. And I know I'm going to be over here. And I know tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that tells me here I'm going to put the 4 here under opposite, and the 3 here, and I know that's negative because think of this as the x, that's the y. This is on the negative x side here, and the positive y here. <clears throat> and then what is the hypotenuse going to be? This is actually going to be a 5. Okay, and this is my angle alpha. And then I come over here on the other side, and I'm just going to draw it right next to it so I can keep them together and save room. Okay, now this is cosine of B. Beta equals one half. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And if you look at the parameters here, that's from zero to pi over two. So that's going to be in the first quadrant. And that's going to be a one down here over the hypotenuse, which is two. And I know this is going to be the square root of three. And this is my special triangle. And I know that this angle here is pi thirds. Now I'm writing this in radians because if you look at all of our parameters, they're all in radians. So I'll do the same. And in most cases, that's what they're going to want for the problems in the book. Now this angle right here, this is my angle beta. Okay, most of the time that doesn't work out for us 
where we actually get a nice a nice angle that we know already that's, that's kind of uncommon for these okay so anyways uh, all we're going to do now is follow the formula now this is um, anyone we're going to choose here now the directions pick cosine of this or cosine of alpha plus beta and it doesn't matter which one we do so we're going to do this one and i'll just write it up here and i'll say four cosine of alpha plus beta and we could be using any one of these formulas for this but we're just going to find this one this is just a nice little example for us to understand what we're doing with these formulas and these angles and everything and all these conditions so anyways so now that means if i'm going to use find that one i'm going to write the cosine of instead of alpha i'm going to leave alpha there sorry yep plus beta okay and that's going to actually equal cosine of alpha cosine of beta oops beta minus sine of alpha sine of beta and essentially all i'm going to do now is just plug all those in so alpha is over here on the on the left right here so then when i look at that one that simply tells me there that the cosine of alpha is going to be negative three-fifths and then i'm going to do the cosine of beta now i'm over here okay so that cosine of beta, and I don't even really have to look at this, I just have to know the cosine on is it is adjacent over hypotenuse, and I'm just gonna put the one half right there. And then minus the sine of alpha, and then we're back on the other one now. So sine of alpha is gonna be four fifths times the sine of beta, and that's gonna be square root of three over two. And all I did was just deal with the sine, sine is opposite over hypotenuse and then again we can simplify this and the simplification of this is just going to be negative 3 over 10 minus 4 square root of 3 over 10. now you guys would think to simplify this uh, by canceling those out but we're not going to do that here what we're going to do is we're just going to subtract those together so i'm going to get a negative 3 minus 4 square root of 3 over 10 and that's actually going to be our answer for this one now keep in mind again we just did one of these the cosine of alpha plus beta but we could do that for any one of these these uh, identities here so anyway something just to keep in mind so that's just a few ideas of of this i'm going to do another video in a second